importa que sea el deseo. I know that when you call for for the desire to be filled, yo sé que cuando tiene el deseo de ser lleno, because I just told you that your faith is not limited, porque le dije que su fe no es limitada, your expectation is for a response. Su expectación es para responder. Oh, somebody, if you know what I'm talking about, come si on, give God glory. Sabe de lo que hablo, dele gloria a Dios. I want you to understand Bartimaeus' call. Quiero que entienda, entienda el llamamiento de Bartimeo. Bartimaeus says Jesus. Bartimeo dice Jesús. Because that's his name. Porque ese es su nombre. And then he says, "Thou son of David." Y luego di dice, hijo de David. Now we know that Jesus is God. Ahora sabemos que Jesús es Dios. Jesús es God. Jesús es Dios. Oh come on, Jesus is God. Jesús es Dios. That's it. That's it. Vamos. Ahí está. Now he said his name, and he said, "Thou son of David." Dice, hijo de David. So the question is, how can he be the son of David? La pregunta es, ¿cómo puede ser el hijo de David? If he's God. Si es Dios. It can be confusing. Puede ser confundido. But let me clear it up for you. Pero déjame es aclararlo. It's a fulfillment of prophecy. Es una profecía que it se was called out in the Old Testament. Está en el Antiguo Testamento. That Jesus would come out of the bloodline. Que Jesús iba a salir de ese linaje. So now we have another question. Ahora tenemos otra pregunta. Why is it such a such a big thing to come out of the bloodline of David? Porque es una grande cosa de salir de ese linaje de David. The Bible tells us that David was the man after God's own heart. La Biblia nos dice que David era un hombre tras el corazón de Dios. Now that we cleared that up. Y que hemos it's aclarado a eso. Jesus, Jesús, that son of David, hijo de David, have mercy on me. Ten misericordia de mí. When we go into the word, we understand who David was. Entendemos por la palabra quién era David. Not only was he the man after God's own heart, no solo era el hombre tras el corazón de Dios, but he was a man of mercy. Pero era un hombre de misericordia. If you know the story of Mephibosheth, si entiende la historia de Mephibosheth, now you have some homework. Go look it up. Ahora tiene tarea. Ve a buscarlo. And in that story, David had mercy. En esa historia David tuvo misericordia. So let's get back to the story. Vamos a regresar a la historia. Jesus, thou son of Jesús, hijo de David, have mercy on me. Ten misericordia de mí. He's literally saying, Jesus. Jesús, I know your name. Yo sé tu nombre. The son of David, hijo de David. I know where you come from. I know you're the fulfillment of prophecy. Yo sé que tú eres el cumplimiento de profecía. Now have mercy on me. Ahora ten misericordia de mí. Oh come on, if you get it, what do you say? Jesus, the son of David, hijo de David, have mercy on me. Ten misericordia de mí. Yo sé que tú eres el cumplimiento de profecía. Misericordioso. And so Jesus, I'm begging you. Jesús está pidiendo. I need a miracle. Necesito un milagro. Jesus, I'm begging you. Jesús te pido. I know that it's inside of you. Yo sé que está dentro de ti. It's inside of your bloodline. Está dentro de tu linaje. So literally, the miracle that I need right now. Literalmente el milagro que necesito. It's been birthed out of the life of the lineage of a man after God's own heart. Ha nacido del linaje del hombre que que está detrás del corazón de Dios. And the beggar is literally saying, "Now my heart is after you." Y el que pide dice, ahora mi corazón está detrás de ti. So it's a call of likeness. Ahora sí es un llamamiento igual. Jesus, Jesus, the son of David, hijo de David, have mercy on me. Ten misericordia de mí. I'm after your heart. Voy tras tu tu corazón. And the man that you come out of was after your heart. Y el hombre he was after things like you. Está detrás de tu corazón también. And so now I'm identifying with you. Y ahora me identifico contigo. Does anybody in the house identify with me? Habrá alguien que se identifica con él. Oh come on, does anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? Alguien sabe de lo que hablo. Oh hallelujah! Turn to your neighbor and call him Savior. Dígale a su vecino Salvador. You might call him King of Kings. Alguien dice Rey de Reyes. You might even call him Lord of Lords. Oh, Señor de Señores. You might call him Master. Oh, Maestro. You might you might call him the Rose of Sharon. Oh, la Rosa de Sarón. You might call him the Ancient of Days. Oh, tal vez el Anciano de Días. But can I tell you? Pero le puedo decir that when you call on Jesus, que cuando llama a Jesús, I said when you call on His name, que cuando usted llama a Jesús, that everything changes. Que todo cambia. Somebody call on His name. Alguien llame su nombre. Because what God is about to do, what He is about to work.
milagro Jesús hijo de David ten misericordia de mí dijo ven aquí y la respuesta es que Jesús llena la necesidad llama su nombre Jesús 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 Jesús
Ghost is in the house. Hallelujah. You all may be returning to your seats. I want to bring somebody very special to the stage just for a moment. He is a good friend, and I want to honor him. As you return to your seats, why don't you give a hand clap of praise to Jesus. Now continue that hand clap for your, your youth secretary as Brother Simino comes.
opportunity to be able to see God do amazing things in people just like them. It's absolutely vital that we get a heart for people and that means getting a heart for missions. Somebody say that it takes more than just a prayer. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. We've got to literally activate ourselves. So in that way, I want to talk to you all about Challenge 31. So Challenge 31 is an opportunity for students to raise between $341 to $961 for Move the Mission by finding sponsors who will give $11, $21, or $31. It doesn't sound that hard, and it isn't. If you can just find some people in your community, in your church, amongst your family, amongst your friends, who will sponsor you for 11, 21, or $31. The next, the next slide should show a form. If you could pull that up for me, it should be on the third slide actually. And so there's 31 slots. So the goal is this, if you're able even to only get $11 sponsors, you will still be able to raise a significant amount. These resources are available on the, the, excuse me, they're available on the Move the Mission website, which will be available on our Instagram. It will be in our bio after this rally. You also will be able to access them through the South Texas UPCI Youth website on Facebook. Praise God, praise God. Amen. I've got a couple more announcements. And then we're going to get ready to worship with one more song. And then the preacher is going to come. Anybody excited for the preacher? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say Youth Camp. Youth Camp. Youth Camp 2022 will be in Lubkin, Texas. It's going to be exciting. It's August the 1st through 5th. We've got registration already open. If you haven't jumped in, you've got to jump in now. $200 for, uh, until June 30th. It includes a free t-shirt. That t-shirt, I guarantee you, it's going to be awesome. 225 from July the 1st till July 30th and $250 in person. I'm happy to say that Brother Holloway will be with us. Praise God, mighty man of God. Come expecting to leave that camp changed. Amen? God is so good. I want to announce a worship night that will be coming up here soon. I want you all to know, I know it's summertime, I know you're out of school, but I want you to know that there are opportunities for you all to continually be in worship, to be in the house of God, to be at rallies. We're thinking of you all as a youth committee and we're making sure that we're planning events around this uh, this month and this time period of the summer. We want you to stay engaged. We want you all to stay connected to the house. Amen. We've got a worship night coming. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be at Destiny Church in Missouri City, Texas. I just want to thank every single church that's here that's not necessarily in HMW or even in our organization. There's some apostolics, Pentecostals, some Christians in the house. 
Thank you for being here. So that event will be on July the 15th. I would be remiss without recognizing Brother Kirk Tillexon, who led in prayer. I can't see very clearly with the lights dimmed. He is back there in the booth right there. I just saw him wave his hand. Why don't y'all clap? Thank you, Jesus. That is our section secretary, also man of God. And I just want to thank him right here from the mic for making this happen tonight. It's impossible for things like this to happen with a lot of background work. We've got an excellent worship team here. We've got a media team that they've been putting the time in, the band, the praise team. We've got photographers, videographers. We've got people who are vendors who have been here. They'll be here after service. They'll be selling uh, items and um, clothing and things for you to go and check out. And we've got an awesome food vendor outside already for you. But I also want to recognize my bishop, my pastor, Bishop Scott Lewis. Praise God. He is not able to be here tonight, but I know that he wishes us the best and he's expecting God to move and he already has. God is so awesome. Before I leave this podium, I want to go ahead and introduce you all to my new but good friend, Reverend Kerry Jones. Amen. He's going to be bringing an awesome word tonight. He's coming all the way from Alabama, but he's come with a burden. He started evangelizing at the beginning of this year full time. And do you know what that means? That means that he's dedicated his whole life to ministry. Amen. And he came a long way, a long way. So I just want you all to be ready. Be on the edge of your seats. Don't let him, don't leave him hanging. Preach with the preacher. Turn to your neighbor and say, preach with the preacher. Amen, amen. I want to welcome the worship team to come back. We're going to get ready to worship one more time. Amen. God is so awesome. As we, as we get ready to get back into worship, I want you to begin to think about something that you've been praying God to do in your life. It could be for years or it could be just this summer. And I want you to imagine that God is already doing it right now. I want you to even picture your, you have it in your hands. So when you're lifting your hands to worship, I want you to give it to God. Amen. We, we, we decided the theme for this rally would be transformation because we understand that young people, you are under attack and that there's a target on your backs, even on your heads. The schools aren't even safe physically for you. And in that understanding, we know that you've got to a summer and that there's a lot of temptation that's going to come your way. It's not an if, but when. So our intention is to equip you, but before we can equip you, you've got to take some things off. You've got to let some things go. You've got to allow the Spirit of God to rest on you fully. Amen. So as they come to sing one more time, why don't you just lift up your hands and get ready for God to do some transformation. Thank you, Jesus.
tonight. Before we go back to our seats, I do feel a holy pause that we need to recognize who's in the building. Now, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad your youth pastor's here. I'm so glad your pastor, these singers are here. But most important, I'm thankful that the King of Kings has made his presence known in this house. So what we're going to do, because I feel that some of us have not prepared ourselves for the Word. And I really feel the Holy Ghost, God wants to transform us tonight. But it's no good if we come here and we're not ready to receive what God has for us. So I wonder, from front to back, side to side, we can all lift our hands. And we ask God, God, prepare me for what you have for me tonight. Come on, I want you to open your mouth and begin to talk to the King of Kings right now. Come on, young people. You can talk to God. Come on. You're not too young to pray. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Get vocal. God, we need you in this house to sweep through this house. I pray that you would touch every need, every heart, every life, God, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the Word of God, and by the power that's in the name of Jesus, I'm asking, oh God, that your presence would sit and rest in this house. Captivate us tonight, God. Let your glory fall. Let there be a manifestation of your presence. I feel something shifting in the atmosphere right now. I feel something changing in the atmosphere right now.
chapter 1 and verse 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Can I tell the story real quick? Is it okay if I tell the story? Y'all got time. It's fine. speaking in tongues, they were like, what's wrong with them? Are they crazy? He said, no, they're not drunk as he. He didn't say they weren't drunk. No, because when you get drunk, it affects your speech. It affects the way you walk. It affects the way you talk. So when you get the Holy Ghost, you don't walk the same. You don't Sister says, hey, 
let's climb the mountain. And I said, who? Go climb that mountain. Not me. She said, oh, come on, Junior. So she goes to my dad. My dad was in the army. He doesn't like to do fun stuff. <laughs> and he says, I'll go with you, Candace. And I'm shocked at this point because my dad literally does not do anything fun. That's not a joke. It's serious. And so when I saw him say yes, I was like, okay. And so my older sister comes to me again and says, come on, Junior. Don't be a scaredy cat. Now listen, that's fighting words right there. <laughs> now I'm afraid of heights and I can't swim. Come on, somebody. <laughs> y'all, some of y'all brothers know what I'm talking about. You can't swim either. <laughs> and so when she said scaredy cat, something rose up in me, Brother Rich. I said, oh no. Okay, I'm gonna climb this mountain. I'm gonna conquer this fear. And so I start climbing this mountain, and as soon as we get about a certain height, I'm like, oh, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and my dad, it was my sister in front of me. I was in the middle. My dad was behind me. And so with every step, my father was telling me where to go. He would say, Junior, because I'm a junior. He said, Junior, watch your step because if you're not careful, you can slip back and fall. Now, my dad understood that I was afraid of heights. So as I was making every step, the fear of where I was going was causing my knees to buckle. And my dad would instruct me, he said, Junior, do not look down. <laughs> but when you're 10 years old, you don't really listen to what your daddy says. So I looked down. And immediately as I look down, my knees locked up, and I'm like, oh, daddy, dad, I'm scared. But as soon as my knees locked up, my dad already knew what was happening. And as my knees locked up, I felt a reassuring hand grab the back of my t-shirt. I felt a re hold on. I felt a reassuring hand of the father grab my t-shirt and said, listen, boy, it don't matter what kind of step you make. Just be reassured. If you fall, I'm going to pick you. When I fall, I shall arise. There's some young people you made with some mistakes two years ago. It's time for you to get back up. Your father does not use condemnation. He uses conviction. And it's time to get back up again. Get your shot back up. Get your praise back up. Get your joy back! And so, that reassuring hand let me know everything is going to be all right. Even when I got to the point of the mountain where I was literally having to walk like this, my dad said, don't worry, baby. I got you. I got you covered. Because the Father will never call you somewhere. That he does not intend to keep you on the... That he does not intend on keeping you through the journey. But one thing I have to overcome when I'm going to a higher place is I have to overcome fear. Some of you young people are afraid to go to the places. Some of you are afraid to go to places that have been prophesied over you because you don't know what's going to happen. God, help me right now. The spiritual attacks and the things that God's calling you to do. You say, that's too much for me, Brother Gary. I can't possibly do that. I don't have anybody in my family that's a preacher. Let me tell you something. The devil is a liar. You don't have to have a perfect pedigree to do something for God. All you gotta do is be like Abraham. Here I am. God, when you call me, I'm willing to do what you asked me to do. Now listen, y'all see that? Y'all like I want to have church in here. But you know, some of you gotta understand. Some
preach. I like to get down here where the people at. Is that okay? I'm going to walk some miles and get close to you. I ain't going to spit on you, I promise. I remember when I was a teenager preaching, we come down there. It's like a rainfall happening. But you got to understand something. When God calls you to do something, he also put into the journey all the times that you would mess up. See, we think that God don't understand that we're human. Can I talk where we're at right now? Because I'm telling you, some adults need to hear what I'm saying too. Just because you messed up and had a baby out of wedlock doesn't mean that God can't use you. And let me tell you something. You don't have to go outside of the world to get a testimony. Because you don't have to experience alcohol and drugs and immorality to say you have a testimony. One of the greatest testimonies is that God kept me from that drug. So, we're going to have church tonight. Genesis chapter 22 in our text, we read that God is speaking to Abraham. Now, mind you, in Genesis chapter 12, God makes a call to Abraham to leave his father, to leave his country, his kingdom, and go into a place that I will show you. Oh, hold up, Jesus. You tripping. Because this is the thing. I'm married. I've got a beautiful wife of six years and two baby boys. I wish they were here. But let me tell you something. If I go to my wife and say, hey, baby, the Lord spoke to me. Okay, what did he say? We got to pack up our stuff. Okay, where are we going? Uh, I don't know yet. But on the journey, I have to conquer fear of the unknown. Because not every time God calls you to do something, he shows you the end result at first. Sometimes God will succeed if you're willing to obey his voice first. And so Genesis chapter 12, he leaves all this stuff behind. But what he does take is his nephew, Lot. And I'm going to preach to somebody today because I feel my help on me right now. Some of you have taken things on your journey that God never intended for you to take. And you know what? Hold on. You know what's happening? Is you're having to fight battles God never intended for you to fight. Now listen. Ooh. Listen. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I thought I left my middle and spirit in Birmingham, in the airport, but I feel it coming on me right now. Now listen, I feel it because I was praying about this service and I felt something very particular to hit. So I ain't scared. But let me tell you something. There are some relationships. Oh, I'm about to lose all of you. You're about to hate me. But let me tell you something. If my pastor says it ain't right, my youth pastor says it ain't right. Something in me should say, this probably is not the will of God. Oh, 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 I hear what you're saying, old girl. I hear what you're saying. My brother Kerry, he said he loved me. Listen, can I just talk to you for a second? It ain't love, it's lust. Y'all gonna kick me out of Houston tonight. If you've been talking for one week and you already got your one week anniversary and you're talking about love, that ain't love, it's lust. And 
And so we got to understand something. It's better to be submitted than to do what I want to do. That's right. I had a girl talk, tell me, bro. I had a girl tell me, because I was trying to run and say, hey, this guy, I just, I feel a check in my spirit. I don't think he's right for me. He just don't want me to be happy. And we are so, we are so deceived to try to take luggage on this journey that's pulling us down and wanting to keep you in what's comfortable. I'm losing some of you right now. I feel, I feel resistance to what I'm preaching right now. But let me tell you something, I'm gonna hit it till it breaks. Some of us need to get on our phone and text them and say, I ain't coming back because I wanna go higher. I wanna go further. I wanna go deeper. If you're not interested in going further, going deeper, baby, you got to go. Because I'm trying to be what God has called me to be. Listen, can one of y'all escort me to the hotel if they try to kick me out? Because I feel like somebody will try to kick me out tonight if I keep preaching this.
He's been waiting years on this promise. God, I've given up things, but now this is a hard request that you're asking of me to give up my boy. A boy meant a lot in biblical times. It's a carrying on of the name. They were important. God, I don't even know if I can kill him if you'll give me another boy. I waited so long for this one. What's to say that I'm going to be able to have another one? And so, here they go. The Bible says that it's Isaac and two lads that are making the journey with them. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 22 that when they started making this journey, that, that Abraham looked and saw the place that God was calling him to afar off. That means that where God was intending for him to be, there had to be a journey upward. But not only that, the journey upward, but the Bible says this, that as they're getting ready to go upward, Abraham looks at the two lads and says, stay here. Now my question to you is, why did Abraham call them on the journey just for them to stay at the bottom of the mountain? I'll tell you why. Because not everybody can go to that place with you. Not everybody in the youth group is interested. Now listen, I'm going to say some strong stuff tonight and I hope you can accept it. But not everybody in the youth group is interested in the prayer life. And so as they're making the journey upward, Abraham says, y'all have to stay here. And me and the lad will go yonder and worship. Worship and sacrifice are connected. Because sometimes you're going to get into a place, young people, where God's going to ask you to sacrifice some things that don't make sense. And the reason why is because God wants to give you an experience. I feel the Holy Ghost is sitting in this place right now. But we want to try to take everything up the mountain with us. Relationships. Apps on your phone. Oh, God. Can I hit this for a second? If I struggled with thoughts in my mind, I would not have Snapchat on my phone. You felt how quiet it got? Because there's something about taking a picture and it deletes and there's no accountability for what I have said. I may not be able to come back after tonight, but I'm just gonna preach what I feel right now. You gotta be careful when you have all these apps on your phone where you are easily be able to delete your history. Oh, I'm gonna hit something right now. Cause I used to be a youth pastor. Oh yeah, five and a half years. And I found out just before I resigned to go full time evangelizing, <coughs> there's a new app called My Eyes Only. Oh, I feel I'm getting some right about now. It's an app called My Eyes Only where kids can take videos and pictures and put them in a file and parents can't even get to them. Oh yeah, I'm exposing something right now. And so what happened is young people would do inappropriate things, send inappropriate videos and put it in a file and their parents could never find it because they didn't have the code. And we're trying to go what God's calling us to. And we're giving all this luggage and all this junk and trying to pull it upward. You can't go upward and you're struggling to even make it to church. Some things have to be let go. Some things gotta be surrendered. Some things gotta be given. You know, 
know one of the toughest things to do? Is to get humanity to let stuff go. Moses, let go of what's in your hand. But, 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 but God, I can't speak. Let go of your bitterness, young person. Let go of your bitterness, young person. Because we like to hold on to things. But in order to go where God is calling us to, we got to be willing to surrender. And so, I'm trying to hurry. I'm getting hungry. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm trying to hurry. Tacos are calling my name. But in Genesis, they're making their way up this mountain, and the Bible says that this place is a full broth. Verse 5 says this, And Abraham said unto the young man, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again. And come again. He had so much faith. In Hebrews, the Bible says that he had so much faith that even if he killed his son, he believed God was going to resurrect him back to life. This is the thing. God's going to honor your sacrifice. God's going to honor your obedience. But on the journey, God's going to demand some things to be left behind. Verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the night of the day with both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father! And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? You know what that tells me? Isaac knew what sacrifice looked like. Let me talk to some parents right now. Because I'm a father, I've got boys, and I've seen the condition of the world. And it's not the pastor's job to teach your kids to pray. It's not the youth pastor's job to teach your kids to pray. But every night before I go to bed, I grab my two boys and we get in the bed and I say, God, I want you to shield my payments tonight. Why? Because when they get older and they have their own kids, I want them to look back and say, Daddy taught me what sacrifice looks like. It's nobody else's job. It's my job as a parent to teach my kid how to pray. Here am I. 
He said, Lay not a hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know. Now I know. I believe sometimes God just asks some things of us so that he can be reassured, that he can trust us. Now I know. But this is the thing, anytime you're willing to sacrifice, there's coming something, a revelation of God that you've never had before. Brother Gary, is this life worth it? I've come to reach for a young person that you're barely hanging on. I feel my help right about now. I've come to reach for a young person right in this house that it's been a long time since you spoke in tongues. And you're saying, because you're surrounded by people in your school doing wrong, and you're saying, I don't understand that this life is even worth it anymore. There's a young man preaching to you tonight that went through that at the age of 16 years old and started asking the questions, is this life even worth it? Because guys, we got it easy. Girls have to go to public school with a long dress on. And I would watch my sister as she come home from school. And she would try her best to convince mom, Mom, let me wear pants just one day. Just let me wear it just one time. Mom said, No, 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 no. And the pressure of being different started weighing on my sister. And she started asking my mom at family prayer, Mom, I don't know if this is even worth it anymore. People are making fun of me at school. I feel your heart right now, young person. I'm ministering to you right now. I don't think this is worth it to be different. And mom kept reassuring to my sister, you just don't know what sacrifice will give you with God. You don't understand a life of sacrifice. It's worth it. But Carrie, why do you say that? Because what I'm about to tell you right now, that the angel had to call Abraham's name twice. You want to know why he had to call him twice? Because anytime the Bible says a name two times, there's an emphasis on the last name. Abraham. And then stronger, the angel said, Abraham, don't do it. You know what that tells me? that he was so convinced of what God called him to do. The angel had to call his name twice to say stop. I wonder how many people in this house are convinced of what God has called you to do. But no, Brother Kerry, I can't do it because I've got issues. I've got flaws. Guess what? So does the guy with the mic. I'm going to talk to somebody in the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost impressing me. I don't care what you did two and a half years ago. But you feel like, I feel my help right now. When you feel like what you have done disqualified you. I'm talking to a young lady right now under the action of the Holy Ghost. When you feel like that mistake disqualified you from doing what God called you to do. You gotta understand something. God didn't mistake. Didn't make a mistake when he called you. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So when he called you, he knew your proclivity to fail. But he also knew what you could become. Listen, I may not finish this message because I feel the Holy Ghost prompting me to stay here for a moment. Some of you are identifying with the no nine when God is calling you Benjamin. Some of you, listen, no, 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 listen to me because I'm ministering because I feel a shift in the spirit right now. Some of you are identifying with something the previous generation has put on.
right now is trying to convince somebody. I may not finish this message. The Holy Ghost is trying to convince somebody. You're not supposed to identify with what the previous generation is trying to put on you. But you're going to identify with what the Father calls you. Listen to me. In that story, he says you're not going to be Benoni, but you're going to be Benjamin. Benoni means son of my sorrow. But Benjamin means son of power or son of my right hand. What's so powerful about a baby? It's a baby doesn't always stay a baby. A baby grows and matures. So the father, listen, the father was looking on what the baby could become. But no, I was focused on what was happening in the moment. You are identifying with the things that you messed up. There's God's ministering right now to an adult. That you can't seemingly get over the mistakes that you've made. And you are walking in an identity God never wanted you to walk in. He was about something about I right now. Is this okay? It's okay. And I tell you, young people are living beneath their calling. Because they're identifying with a mistake they made two years ago. Can I preach where we're living tonight? And so, so many people can't worship, can't lift their hands. Because, but Gary, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the mistakes that I've made. And God said, I want to give you an identity change tonight. And I want you to be what the Father says you are. I'm going to tell somebody, I'm going to tell a young lady right now. We're in a God moment because God's trying to save somebody's soul right now. Amen. Just because, listen to me, I'm going to speak, speak some very specific things in the Holy Ghost right now. Just because you don't have a father in your life, young lady, doesn't mean you have to reach for the affirmation of guys in your high school that want to take advantage of you. I've watched it happen too many times. In my youth group as a youth pastor, they used to watch girls. I feel the Holy God has shifted this service. I watched young girls come into youth, into youth services. Always walking in late. And I'm always having a good courage. Hey, you look beautiful tonight. Oh, no, I know I don't. Yeah, you do. And I get calls from the parents saying, Carrie, I don't know what to do about her. She just had a relationship 13 years old. I get a call from the mom. You want to know what her mom called me and told me?
I want somebody to help me pray because God's trying to reach for a young lady. All over this house right now, I want you to lift your hands and I want us to pray because God's trying to touch somebody. Come on, young ladies. Come on, young men. I want you to lift your voice right now. Come on. God has stopped this service to help a young lady make a decision. He will stop you. He cut up on Satan. Oh, <laughs> 
listen to me. I want everybody to listen to me. I want everybody to listen to me right now. I want everybody to listen to me. You never know when somebody comes in here carrying. You never know. And I'm comfortable and I'm okay if I don't get to finish this message. And God interrupts our whole program to save some young ladies and some young men from making a mistake. I want you, I want you to listen to me for a second, okay? I'm gonna say this and I'm done. Is this okay if I just follow the Holy Ghost? I'm sorry, I don't get to finish it, but we just gonna follow the Holy Ghost. I was preaching a rally in my home state in Alabama. We're going to pray for people to get the Holy Ghost. God's going to do his thing tonight. I was preaching a rally in Alabama. And I didn't really have a clear direction on what to preach. And I get to the platform. They sung song number two, song number three. And after the fourth song, something just fell on me. And after I felt this heaviness, I literally fell to my knees and I just couldn't keep the intercession off of me. And I said, God, you got to explain to me what I'm feeling right now. God spoke to me and said, there's suicide in the house. I said, okay, God. Anytime God speaks to me that clearly, that fast, I know that I'm supposed to address it as soon as I get to the pulpit. So I stepped to the pulpit and I said, somebody suicide in this house. <laughs> the youth rally, about 100, 120 kids, and there wasn't really a resounding response until after service. After service, Slady comes, tears in my eyes, Brother Rick, and she brings to me a little girl, 10 years old. We never know when somebody comes in here with or what they're carrying. And she said, but Carrie, I want you to pray that evil spirit off of her. And I saw as that little 10 year old girl lift up her sleeve. And I saw all the cut marks on her wrist. And I said, God, if we're so worried about finishing a message and not following the Holy Ghost, we can miss what God wants to do, even in a service like tonight, where God interrupts our program and says, I want to speak to you. I'm going to tell you honestly, and I hope this is okay if I say this. Somebody in this house is suicidal. And you've been cutting yourself to feel things. God, Jesus, took stripes on his back. So that you didn't have to deal with the emotional hurt and the questions of why. And try to do all these things by yourself. He paid it all. You don't have to keep cutting yourself to feel something. God loves you. God cares about you. God wants you to know tonight you've got to leave some stuff behind. Some emotional things, some hatred, some bitterness. You've got to leave some stuff behind. You've got to leave some stuff at the bottom of the mountain Amen. so that you can go to the place God's calling you to. So right now, right now, I want some boldness in the house. I know some people have already come, but there's more people sitting in your seats right now that you need to let some stuff go. If you're one of those ones, I know I didn't get to finish my message, I'm sorry. But if you want those words right now, I don't care where you're at. We're a family here. 
But if you're saying, I need, to, I need God to help me to let some stuff go, I want you to come right now. And if you're already up here, I want you to come as close to the altar as you can to make room for those that are going to come. Because I need God to help me with some of this. God's going to help some of us with some emotional things that you've been dealing with. Some emotional hurt that you've been dealing with. I feel the love of God in this house right now. I want you to listen to me. We're going to pray a specific prayer. We're going to pray a specific prayer. We're going to give God whatever it is. If it's bitterness, if it's hurt, if it's emotional, suicidal thoughts, whatever it is. We're going to release it to God. And what you're going to feel is you're going to feel a weight lift off of you. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to give that all to God. And when you feel that release, I feel it right now on me right now. When you feel that release, I want you to begin to lift up your voice. I want you to begin to shout. Some of you, it's been a long time since you were able to worship God freely. Some of you are going to get your worship back tonight. I'm not talking about hyping you up. I'm talking about getting to a place where you become victorious in your walk with God every day. Are you ready for what God's about to do right now? I want you to lift your hands. I want every person to lift your hands right now. And we're about to release something and give it to God. God, I want you to close your eyes. And when you start feeling something come over you, I want you to begin to let what you feel out. I want you to let it out. God, right now, by the authority of the word of God, and by the power that's in the name of Jesus, God, you have interrupted this service so that you can give divine healing some emotional hurt. He 